the music in me knew it simply had to be my destiny. I'm blessed to be the best within my CNH. And he -E. please believe not Ninja Gaiden. I'm not the guy to fight with them lightning. They come and dumb and I leave them enlightened. It's time to What's up, my wizards? Dev from SBMTG, that channel down there. I got something super special for you today. This includes cards from Magic Origins. This is Jeskai Agro Planes Walkers, because that's what you have to do. I'm, I'm excited to bring this to you because I've been testing this out, tweaking it, taking things out, putting things in for a couple of days now. So, want to know what you think? Here it is. Well, let's play 15 creatures in this deck, four of which are Monastery Swift Spear. Well, Swift Spear does a lot of things for us. It helps Gideon flip early. It's a red spell for Chandra, at Chandra and there's lots of instants and sorceries in this deck here. So, Monastery Swift Spear started off as a three of, ended up wanting the four of, because she facilitates a lot of things that we're trying to do here, which is sort of a theme with a lot of the cards that you'll see in this deck. We've also got three copies of, I'm just going to call them Gideon forever. Um, well, this is a 2-1 with an upside, a pretty tremendous upside, in that he can get better later in the game. He can get bigger. He can protect our guys from mass removal. He can, as a couple of people pointed out in the comments, make Ojutai indestructible when he swings in, because that's the only time he's vulnerable. So, does have applications in this. He's not a great late game top deck, because even late game, none of his abilities are amazing. Now, that make a creature, you know, attack into him, that can neutralize a blocker at earlier mid-game stages. That's pretty decent um, because they attack into him, they tap, then you can swing. Um, that, make a creature indestructible, one of the better abilities on the card, but don't discount the, you know, I become a 4-4 that doesn't take damage. So, you know, the, the whole 1-mana 2-1 that becomes better later in the game, he is a pretty relevant creature, all things considered. And we've got a lot of things that turn him on. Let's play one copy of Seeker of the Way, sort of for the same reason we're playing Monastery Swift Spear in that the prowess is really good on this card, helps us, you know, uh, sort of control combat situations, which this deck does very well. It puts a lot of pressure on opponents in combat, though it does sort of have a problem gaining initiative, so there's a push-pull there. But all things considered, Seeker of the Way does the same thing he does in every other deck, so I'm not going to spend too much time on him here. We're going to play two Jace here, um, the new one, obviously. Uh, Jace does plenty of cool stuff. In this deck, which is mostly burn-oriented when it all comes down to it, we want to be able to loot and we want to be able to cast those spells again, both of which he does. Um, his plus one is better than you might think it is at first glance. Siege Rhino, for instance, well, he'll become a 2-5, which is nowhere near as threatening in any way. It can also neutralize dragons in a lot of ways. I wouldn't, I'm not super disappointed in it, um, but obviously his neg three is what we're going to be using very often here. And if we can get the ultimate off, it's very good because we're going to be casting a lot of spells. But that neg three is why he's here and he's been very powerful. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff that you can do with him. We're playing three copies of this new Chandra here. As we went on um, in making this deck, the deck became more about Chandra than almost anything else. She is very exploitable, very powerful. We've got 22 um, sort of non-Chandra red spells in this deck, and her ultimate is a beast. No one's talking about this. Her ultimate essentially does nine damage. It does six of them, and they get the emblem, so that when you say go, they take another three damage immediately. So nine damage off of an ultimate can often win you the game in this burn deck, because you've already done three damage with her to flip her in the first place. So we're talking 12 right there, plus the burn you use to flip her. So she can close out a game easily, and I... I support her in like a mono red burn thing. I think she's a great piece for that deck right now. And God knows we may see even better burn here in Magic Origins. They may possibly, but probably not, bring back Lightning Bolt. How hype would that be? So, but we probably will see some more staple burn in this set. So Chandra only gets better with better red spells, which we'll likely see. So I, I'm pretty hyped for Chandra after playing with her for a while. She's, she is very good. And let's finish off the creatures. Two copies of Ojutai, Dragonlord Ojutai. Um, Ojutai, I mean, he's a late threat, which we don't have many of. He's hard to remove. He benefits from a lot of the stuff we're doing here in the Planeswalkers and the spells. So I'm playing Ojutai just because I, I really don't see any reason not to. I mean, he's one of the, possibly the best creature in the format. We're in his colors. Let's make room for him. We're playing 22 spells in this deck here, um, three of which our Wild Slash. Um, this could also be four here. Now, any burn is going to help Chandra flip, obviously, and help Chandra deal more damage. Um, so we got to have plenty of it. Because like I said, the deck became more about Chandra as it went on. And 
Wow Slash is always a good card, pretty much no matter what. We're playing three copies of God's Willing. It started out as two, but this card really is an all-star. It helps your Ojutai attack safely. It helps your Chandra attack safely. I mean, this deck, this card protects everything in the deck so it can do what it's meant to do. Either anticipate for you or flip or, you know, deal the two damage so it can later flip. So, yeah, definitely God's Willing in the Scry isn't half bad either because that's, Scry is a very powerful effect in this deck that wants to draw lots of burn um, whenever it can. So getting lands and stuff out of the way that we don't need, very important. God's Willing does a lot of stuff for us here. Four copies of Lightning Strike, see uh, Wild Slash for the reasons why you play this card. Again, we can cast it out of the graveyard with Jason, flip Chandra, we can do all kinds of things with it, and it kills creatures and goes to the dome. All the Lightning Strikes. <laughs> do it. We're also playing four copies of Dragon Fodder here in this slot. Uh, Dragon Fodder helps Gideon flip, and it helps Chandra flip, and it's not a terrible cast out of the graveyard with Jace. All three of our Planeswalkers gain you know, some kind of benefit or interaction with this card, and I really like Dragon Fodder too to help us clog up the board early game if we need to. We're playing one copy of Anticipate in the most flexible slot in the deck. This card, it, this particular slot, has been Roast, it has been um, Hordling Outburst, it has been Raise the Alarm, it has been Dig Through Time, but I settled on Anticipate here because I want a card drawing effect, a dig effect of some kind, um, very, very badly to help the deck out, keep it going, find its burn, or whatever threat it currently needs. There's, this is a very flexible slot I went with Anticipate. We're playing three copies of Jeskai Charm. This card is probably the most often one of the two. Most often recast cards with Jace, uh, his Neg 3 ability. Um, Jeskai Charm is just too good for us. It clogs up combat early game by putting a thing on top of their library. They, they, draw, it, they draw it again too, so that helps advantage-wise. Um, hits them for four if we need the burn, and gives our Seekers and Swiss Spears and all of our creature Planeswalkers that haven't flipped yet, and all of them, Ojutai included, lifelink and plus one plus one. We use every single mode on this card um, in different situations, so I'm thinking about upping it to four charm, but at least the three copies. This, this is an all-star. We're playing two, just the two for now, copies of Stoke the Flames here in this deck. Obviously we're playing Dragon Fodder. I was playing Raise the Alarm, but I still think this card is good enough without it. Um, and again, a great recast kind of card. Um, I just, you can tell I love Jace's negative three, um, and there's plenty of things we can do with that. So, Stoke the Flames is always a good card, one of the better burn cards in the entire format. Takes out everything that we care about, except for, you know, one or two exceptions, Siege Rhino, but this usually goes to the dome, or can sometimes take out their biggest threat, so gotta play Stoke. It's great. One copy of Narset Transcendent. This is another very flexible slot, because I'm not really sure I like its interaction, uh, with Jace. Now, what you cannot do is say, oh, my next spell has rebound, and then cast a spell out of your graveyard with Jace. You can't do that. Also, it's plus one. We are playing a fair amount of creatures in this deck, and, uh, you know, it, it's much, it's, it's not very easy to turn on its plus one to actually draw a card off of it. So this, this is a very flexible slot, although in a lot of cases it does draw burn for us that we would otherwise not draw. And, the rebound is very good again because we're playing so many crazy burn spells. So I, I'm still supporting Narset. I've taken her out a couple of times and put her back in because I missed her, you know. So I, I'm, I would play Narset, at least the one copy, but this is a flexible slot. And one copy of something people would argue a flexible slot, but I, I don't think so. After playing with it for a while, I, I love this card like I thought I would. This is Ravaging Blaze. Ravaging Blaze is ridiculous. Um, this is the other most popular to recast card with a Jace. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Ravaging Blast or Ravaging Blaze often does, you know, especially late game, you can hit for eight, you know, kill their biggest guy, deal eight to them, sometimes closing the game out. But even if it's small, even if you hit for three or four, you've just Draconic Roared, or you've Stoked the Flames, one of their guys, and hit them, essentially. So I love Ravaging Blaze. Every time I draw it, I want to see it. Thinking about putting more copies in, but I don't know that the deck supports that over some other cards that it wants more. But I do really like at least the one copy of Blaze. This card has worked out very well so far. Here are lands. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because we've been playing Jeskai lands for a very, very long time now uh, in this format. Just because Jeskai combo has been a thing since as you know as soon as Jeskai Ascendancy was spoiled. So yeah, these are Jeskai lands. We've been doing this. Keep doing it. Here's our sideboard. There's a bunch of stuff in our sideboard that could have ended up in the main deck that in hostilities is a big one. And one that I do 
want to talk about is Active Treason. Active Treason is a red spell for Chandra, clears blockers for Chandra and Kythrios, and helps Kythrios attack with two other guys. So Active Treason actually has a lot of really cool applications in this deck. That's why I'm playing them in the sideboard. I I think that might actually be awesome. Outpost Siege, you see that? That almost made it in the main. Roast almost made it in the main and might should be there. Um, tell me what you think about all of that because I think that this is really a speculative sideboard more than anything else. Most of these are just like, this could also be in the main. Um, so yeah, that is the deck. Let me go ahead and post what I believe so far are the power rankings. And yeah, uh, as you can tell the deck is quite powerful. It needs a little bit more space speed, it chugs a little bit, especially considering all the low-cost creatures, Monastery Swiss Spear, you know, um, the one mana two on Kythrios that we have in the deck. It, it really just wants to make it to the mid-game, mid does a lot of damage until the mid-game, and then burns them out um, with just bomby stuff. Again, Chandra is ridiculous and can often close out the game for us here. Um, is very consistent, always has something to do. Um, but again, I think that this deck has a few flexible slots and will ultimately not end up looking exactly like what I've made here. There will probably be a couple of changes because there's so many options for this deck. But decks with a lot of options usually end up being very, very powerful. So I really, really like it. You guys let me know what you're thinking. Um, obviously, this could also be a Boros deck. Um, just take out... You know, Jace, but I really want to have the Jeskai Charms in there. And I want to address, I didn't use Dig Through Time. It was originally in the deck, but didn't interact well with Jace at all. Like, and you wouldn't think that would really be a problem that often, but it was a problem all the time. So, and you would just think, you know, oh, just loot with Jace and then use the Dig, you know, or something like that. But it just, it never interacts well. It never interacts well. So I used um, Anticipate instead of dig, but dig, I miss it a little bit. I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, so that's another powerful inclusion that this deck could make. But in any case, I think that's all I have right now. Oh, and one more thing. I said this in the spoiler video, but playing with Jace, I still wonder if he could make Turbo Fog a possible thing. And I know that that's a thing no one ever wants to talk about, but again, it's a hobby of mine. I like Turbo Fog. It's, it's a cute deck idea. And Jace, might actually work out super well for something like that. So, in any case, I think I've babbled on enough. I just had a lot to say, and I wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. Let me know what you guys think about this, and maybe I've changed my opinion slightly on Gideon, although he is the least effective Planeswalker. Of, of the three Planeswalkers we're playing here, he's the one that I want to see the least. I want to see the other two way more, although Gideon is good. I'll change my opinion. He's probably a little higher than I rated him before, but I'm still not entirely impressed. But in any case, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I've said that a couple of times, but I'm really, really interested um, to know. Yeah. And I'm Dev from SBMTG. Next up, we either got budget, mono, white, and standard, or you guys would rather see this, budget, mono, white, soul sisters, in modern. So I know a lot of people have been wondering, wanting me to do modern and Tony to do modern. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit. And uh, yeah, in any case, I will see you guys next time. I'm Dev from SBMTG, and thanks for watching, my wizards.